This goes out to all those youngins out there. If you do this every single day, I promise you, you will make it at the next level. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Pistol P, Pete Medina. I'm back at it with another video, y'all. Today, I'm going to be talking about what I learned as a D2 men's basketball manager. This is gonna be a banger, so make sure you like, subscribe to this channel, comment some of the things you wanna see moving forward, turn on that post notification bell. Without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start off with the, some context before we get into the thick of things with this video. So I went to Regis University, which is a D2 school in Denver, Colorado. It's a school in the RMAC Conference, which is the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. And I decided to go to Regis after my senior year of high school. Um, obviously, y'all seniors and everyone who's finished high school kind of knows the deal. Go to college right after high school, yada, yada, yada. So the reason why I chose Regis in the first place was because it was a private school. And at the time, I thought that was a big deal. Um, it's a private school. Um, but that's what led me to go into Regis. And it's, basketball was not on my radar at the time. I just finished up my senior year and I kind of was focusing on academics at the time and I felt like because it was a private school that spoke to how illustrious the school was or whatever so that I made that decision to go ahead and go to Regis. So when I arrived at Regis I was like I said I was strictly focused on academics at the time and basketball was I didn't love basketball at the time I felt like I was struggling just moving on and moving past it because I didn't decide to play basketball at the collegiate level. If y'all want to know why, make sure you comment and like this video and I'll go ahead and talk about that story a little bit more. But for now, let's focus on what I learned as a men's basketball manager. Once, I, I think it was like September, October rolled around, I had a change of heart. And I was like, yo, I always want to play college ball and man, I just love the game, to be honest with you. I was like, I can't just leave it and at least I could say I tried. So I go ahead, contacted the coach, uh, clipped up a few highlights, sent them out to him, hoping that I could at least get a look. So what I go ahead and do, I send out those things, those highlights, I wait a couple of days and I finally get an email back. And when I got the email back, Scott Clark, shout out my boy Scott, he sent me an email back, which I'm assuming he didn't watch the highlights or anything like that because he was like, yo, our roster's filled, which I understand because it was like last minute, whatever. And he was like, yo, we're not looking for any players at the time because the roster is filled, but we are looking for a men's ma basketball manager. Would you be interested? And I was like, my intentions at first were like, hell yeah, bro, I'm gonna kill the manager spot. I'm gonna be like early to every practice. I'm gonna be making sure them benches are warmed. I got the waters for all the squad or whatever the case may be. So I'm like, hell yeah. And then he was like, okay, come in for an interview and let's talk. So I go in for the interview and he just asked me, you know, basic questions, why I want to, do I love basketball is basically what he was saying to, you know, be sidelined and not want anything else, just be the manager. I was like, hell yeah, because I love the game, obviously. And I was like, yo, I tried to sneak it in there, but do it right. So I'm like, yo, you know, what are the chances that I can be on the squad? And he's like, he shut that idea down right away. He was like, hell no, bro. That, that's not what I'm hiring you for. If you want to do that, you can leave, basically, is what he told me. And I was like, no, no, no. I want to be on the team. So I got an interview with him and the head coach, Brady Bergeson. Shout out my boy, Brady. Um, he actually knew my high school coach, and my high school coach put in a good word for me. So I was accepted as a men's basketball manager as my work-study position. As for the roster, I was very fortunate to be around such a great group of guys. Like, I feel like, so you had players like Donald Gibson, that was the bro. He played like J.R. Smith, straight up, strapping from the three. Big dude, 6'4", good friend of mine. We had a couple classes together, so shout out Donald. But yeah, he was tight, bro. We had people like Brian Dawson, elite. Well, I think he finished like 12th all-time scoring at Regis, so I had the pleasure of being around him. He was the bro. Uh, you got players like Aaron Bogle. He was from Aurora. He went to Eagle Crest. He was the bro. He was 6'5", lengthy. 
he was like unorthodox, but he could strap, get to the rim. He was super talented too. You had a couple guys from overseas. You got Thomas. Thomas was the coolest guy I've ever met, honestly. One of the coolest guys I've ever met. So talented. He played like Steve Kerr, just catch and shoot, strap every time. That was lefty, but whatever. You got players like Will, Australian, super talented, lefty. Played like Steve Nash, which I'll talk about later in the video. Michael Benz. Benz was the bro too. Kevin Eason. Christian Little. If y'all don't know who that is, he was the one from the original In The Lab series. So go and look him up. Bro was elite. It was actually like crazy meeting him in person because I watched him like his whole progress throughout, you know, In The Lab and stuff like that. And to go to the same school, I was like, damn. Honestly, like a little starstruck. I ain't even gonna cap, bro. A little starstruck, but super cool guy. One of the best Rangers that Regis has ever seen. So yeah, it, it was a super talented group of guys. Well, let's go ahead and fast forward to what I actually learned when I was on, you know, being the men's basketball manager. So for starters, I would say athleticism is a requirement. The shortest guy on the team was about 5'10", my boy Shane, shout out Shane. Um, the tallest guy on the squad was obviously their big man. He was 6'10", shout out Roberto. But yeah, so the average height was around 6'2", 6'3", and yeah, so you're, you gotta be quick, shifty you got to be bouncy too because even though Shane was 5'10 5'11 six foot he was still able to get up to the rim and basically dunk he was hitting them little baby rim grazers but we ain't gonna talk about that because I'm sure he's banging out now but yeah so you got to be athletic to be able to hang with those type of guys those guys 6'2 six, 6'3 six, lengthy like they will shut you down they'll shut your game down so if you ain't ready on the athletic side of things skill set only takes you so far. So one of the takeaways that I took away from being the men's basketball manager was it's all about efficiency. And what I mean by that is you got a limited amount of dribbles and shots and stuff that you could take because minutes are limited, you're restricted minutes, you, you're in an actual game playing versus also elite players. You don't got time to be, you know, dancing and mashing potatoes as my old high school coach, Coach B, shout out Coach B used to say, but you don't got time to do all that. And I was playing basketball with one of these young players the other day, and he was like, yo, I need more moves in my bag. And I'm like, no, you don't, bro. You do not need more moves in your bag. You need to be good. You're not even that good with the moves that you have. No offense, but, you know, you got to be able to strengthen just the moves that you're going to use in an actual game. Because you ain't going to be able to, like, hit professor stuff in a game. Like, that just doesn't happen. Like, my boy Little, for example, he probably had like four or five moves. Don't get don't get it twisted. This man had a bag. But he had like four or five moves that, bro, good luck stopping that. Like he had the Smitty, that little IT, ugh, that little stop and go, filthy. And then he had another one that, bro, that drop crossover, that bulldog, mean ass bulldog. He would just hit you with the, ugh, ugh, just, bro, filthy. Uh, he had that spin move in the lane, but, and he would go off. Put, like, defenders know what you're going to do, but he's so good at them. He's great at pacing and being efficient with just those sets of moves that he was able to average 17 points in his senior season and be fourth all-time with at Regis and scoring. So, I mean, you know, it's all about he was able to catch and shoot one, two dribble pull-ups and bang it. And he was able to just bulldoze in the lane. And that's what made him so successful. It wasn't just him having all these different crazy moves, just ISOing at the top of the key. Like that's not what made him great. What made him great is just kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. And that's why he was so great at getting to the lane and getting buckets. The thing I want to talk about today is you gotta play defense. Now young players think that it's all about offensive you know, having a skill set and having a bag offensively that gets you looked at by college recruits and college coaches and stuff like that. But that's not really the case, man. Like, you, those same guys I'm talking about, Little, BD, two of the best guys on Regis' squad at the time, you got to be able to defend that, bro, and contain and try to lock those players up and do your best to defend them from dropping 30 points on your head every game. 
Like, you got to be able to defend guys like that. So, yeah, man. Like, there was my boy Taff. Shout out Taff. He wasn't that great offensively, but that man would lock you up. You know what I'm saying? So, you got to be able to lock players up and play great defense. And if you're able to do that, you might not be averaging those 17 points per game like my boy Little did. But you're going to get playing time. Consistent playing time. And at the next level, you that's what you want. You want to go to a school where you're getting playing time and being able to play the game that you love without being restricted or limited to anything. So make sure y'all get in the gym and work on your defense. Like whenever you're playing a great play, go play against great players and try to lock them up. Clamp them up so you could be able to play at the next level to where no one's getting past you. Be the best offensive player that you can be, but lock whoever is in front of you down. Lock them up. Lock them down. Lock them up. Whatever. But you know what I'm, you get the point. You know what I'm trying to say. Well, that about does it for today's video, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned. I got a lot more basketball content coming out. Make sure to like this video, comment, subscribe to the channel, turn on that post notification bell so you can get alerts whenever I drop banger videos like this. And yeah, so stay tuned. Hope to see y'all next time. Peace out.